Well, I was not expecting this one, but today we finally got an update on BF2042. It's a big blog that was posted and there's some interesting gameplay changes coming up that they really went into detail about here. Some admissions that perhaps some of the design decisions that DICE took for the game didn't pan out in the end and they're looking at changing them some insight into the future maps that are coming out for the game and also a patch for next week with a little bit of info on what's inside that so we'll take a look at the thread here it's called battlefield core feedback maps Today we'll kick off our first key of focus, map design. Based on your feedback, we'll outline five main topics we've identified around the current problems that we face with gameplay on maps, their cause, and our current thought process and proposed changes on addressing these problems. The first section here is on traversal. One of the core issues we've identified is traversal. We both see and have heard your frustrations on how long it takes on maps today to travel between flags or from base spawn to flag. This comes as a result of the introduction of 128 players in combination with some of the biggest maps that we've ever created as play spaces. While the larger maps offer more play space and freedom, a side effect is that gameplay is now spread out more, resulting in an overall increase in time to combat when related to playing the objective and this next bit is quite funny we've seen you use terms such as walking simulator to describe how this feels in game we understand that this isn't a satisfying experience and agree that there's too much overall travel time i think the first time that i heard walking simulator was back when day z came out so DICE are currently looking to reduce the overall travel time between flag and base spawn on some maps by moving both the base spawn and closest flags. We've already identified a number of obvious candidates that fall outside of our new expected behaviours, but we want to hear from you on this topic as well, which maps presently provide a poor opening experience because of the location of the base spawn. The next section is intensity, and this has been a big complaint of the core gameplay in 2042. Another area that we've identified where we feel we can improve your gameplay experience is in the overall intensity of combat. Largely, we feel that this issue is mainly related to 128 player modes, and especially in Breakthrough. We know that during certain pushes for the objective, it can get too chaotic when fighting over flags. Either there are too many players or vehicles, and sometimes the overall chaos can make it feel overwhelming when accurately trying to assess what's happening around you. I think that's a fair assessment, especially on Breakthrough. My personal experience is that you just get shot from everywhere. There's too many vehicles. You don't know what's going on. It carries on. In terms of improvements, we're presently reviewing if it makes sense to keep Breakthrough as 128 players versus 64, or if we feel that a reduction of the total number of vehicles that can spawn ensures that their presence isn't as overwhelming and gives the infantry players a more important role. That was interesting. In the lead up to the holidays, we introduced 64 player breakthrough and recently made some changes to the ticket value across the mode based on behaviors that we were seeing in the final objective phase. And I think you should take note of this right now. We feel that breakthrough on 64 players provides the best experience of a breakthrough. So I think that's DICE saying pretty much that breakthrough is going to be a 64 player mode and that's it. Next up is line of sight, another really important one. When we refer to line of sight, we're relating this to how often you're taking fire from enemies at distance. We feel and have heard from you that there are presently too many open and flat spaces on some of our maps, which puts too much focus on direct long distance combat between objectives. We largely see that feedback aimed at certain areas in Kaleidoscope, but have observed discussion on other areas of our maps as well. And then it goes into what they're actually going to change and do. Our current plan for improvement is to ensure that there are more opportunities to hide yourself from enemy line of sight while traversing from objective to objective, with the goal of ours being to reduce the focus on long range combat and the necessity of carrying weapons which perform best in these ranges. So it looks like they'll be adding cover between objectives and they do go further into this in another section. There's way more detail there. Kaleidoscope is a main offender for line of sight challenges and they're all already making passes internally on improving certain areas of the map, including redesigning the breakthrough experience to move combat into areas of the map where better cover already exists. Penultimate section is paths. Another feedback area of focus is not having clear paths towards objectives and the lanes that players are most commonly traveling in when moving between them. Without a clear intended path, enemy fire is more often coming in from all possible angles. Yeah, I totally feel that. We recognize that when you're defending, this can make it difficult to hold the objective. When on the attack, we see players exposing themselves on bad lanes in bids to push for a flag. So they're currently looking at bringing improvements into the paths that we have on our maps to make clear and define paths while traveling between the objectives in order to keep combat focused and to make 
make it easier to understand how to get from one objective to the next. And here's that bit about cover, the final section. Lastly, and similar to line of sight, the current lack of cover across maps is another improvement area, which is also caused by the open and flat spaces that you've encountered on certain maps. While we're trying to limit direct long range combat between objectives, we're also looking to ensure that sufficient cover is there for when you're traveling between the objectives. So we're addressing this by reviewing the need for additional cover in places where we feel that it's needed. In line with what has been discussed in some of our other focus areas, our intent is to reduce the likelihood of being fired at from a 360 degree angle and to take that Hail Mary feeling of running onto no man's land between objectives. I think a lot of maps in 2042 suffer from that. There's a massive lack of cover, even around some of the objective areas themselves. So I hope that they look at that too. And then there's some examples here of how they're changing things. They've got this prototype layout of breakthrough on Kaleidoscope. So you can see that the spawns for the attacking team have moved to the south and then a1 and a2 are in line with each other down this funnel b1 stays the same and then c1 and c2 have moved obviously not on the rooftops anymore so that'll be a much more linear experience there and then for conquest on kaleidoscope there's quite some big changes really if you compare the original to the prototype layout that they're working with here both the gimme flags are now just one flag rather than two so A1 and A2 is just A1, E1 and E2 is just E1. They've changed the flags around the park area. There's only two now in the southeast corner and D, of course, that building in the middle stays the same. So it looks much more linear and focused in this particular setup, though the north of the map there certainly won't be seeing much action at all. When can we see these changes implemented in the game? The plans that we've outlined today will require substantial development time. So we want to be transparent that not all these proposed changes will be available to you in-game simultaneously across all our library of maps. And there's information about the future maps here, as I promised. We've established that some healthier behaviors that we've already started to incorporate into new maps that are in development for the game. But we'll be approaching the updating of old maps with dedicated focus to the maps most needing the change first. So it doesn't look like it's going to be a remake of all of the original maps in one go. It appears that they'll do them one by one, maybe, or two every update. I don't know, just guessing. And their immediate focus is to make improvements to Kaleidoscope on both Conquest and Breakthrough. We're currently planning to deliver updates specifically to Kaleidoscope during Season 1, and that's going to be in summer, so still a few months to go before we see any of those changes. And then what do these identified changes mean for future maps? And again, this is a big admission that perhaps design wasn't right for the game. The biggest action point for ourselves is that bigger maps don't necessarily mean more freedom and play styles or fun. So you can expect future maps to be smaller in scale than most of our release maps. This also means that we're reviewing a possible reduction in the number of sectors and total capture points per map when playing with 128 players. We're also thinking about changing the shape of the maps to give them more sense of direction. We feel that going from a common battlefield standard of a square shaped play space to a rectangular shape most commonly used in some of our older entries in the franchise can better incentivize pushing forward versus circling out sideways. We feel that this can help to focus areas of combat, enabling you to have more focused awareness and reduce opportunities for enemy fire to come in from all around you. So future maps that they're developing, much more focused, smaller, and I imagine that they'll follow a much similar lane style fashion rather than this just big sandbox like a lot of the 2042 maps, a bit more focus. I'd also love to see them go back into the original maps though and make them look a bit warm torn messed up a lot of them are just way too clean they didn't mention any of that here but fingers crossed that they actually go back and do that and there's a little bit at the end here that i thought was interesting lastly we'd like to end with once again stating our dedication to the continued effort of improving on and delivering new content for bf 2042 we don't take you our players for granted and we truly appreciate your feedback and continued post-launch support now that we're on the road to season one and that's it i mean it's quite a big lengthy post really and it's cool to see that they're actually going back and changing some of the fundamental designs of the game here looks like it's going to take a while though but of course we'll start to see this in season one in summer whenever that drops and then finally just some little notes for the patch next week it was supposed to be this week but it was delayed update 3.3 will introduce a refreshed scoreboard incorporating requests from across the community to update our format to display deaths alongside kills and a team split to help differentiate leaders per team and that is it do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below guys thank you for watching if you enjoyed the vid leave a like if you didn't a dislike subscribe for more and i'll see you in the next one